time to head out and check on our uh, Good Catch Fishing Report with Captain Dylan Hubbard from Hubbard's Marina. Hey, Dylan, good morning. Good morning. How are you, Russell? We're good here. We're good. Hey, before we get to uh, what's biting, uh, we've all watched uh, in sadness, horror this week at that water from the Piney Point plant being dumped into the bay and eventually into the Gulf. Are you uh, hearing anything about that, what it's, what it's doing to the water yet? I mean, I'm monitoring the website pretty closely to see the levels, but I'm no scientist. I just know from family experience, not so much my own personal experience, but back not too long ago, they dumped a barge of that phosphate water into the Gulf of Mexico. and. It wasn't very long after that a large, substantial area of hard, live rock bottom was dead, and one of the most severe red tides that my family history recalls uh, began. So I'm really, really nervous about dumping that type of water into a very shallow, very warm Tampa Bay, especially right before summer when the water's only going to get more warm and algae is already naturally occurring there. So we're basically essentially throwing lighter fluid on what could be a wildfire. So mm. nervous about it to say the least, but right now waters are clear and fishing is normal and nothing has come to fruition yet. And hoping and praying that stays the same. Good, good. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Uh, well, let's talk about what is body. Well, what, let's start with inshore. All right, so right first, I wanted to start with some definitions. I, I find myself talking inshore, nearshore, and offshore without really defining them. Okay. So inshore to me is basically from our beaches to the upper bay, while nearshore is from the beaches out to about 20 miles or 100 foot of water. And offshore is beyond 20 miles or beyond 100 foot. Okay. But inshore right now we're seeing the snook very active they're starting to move back into the passes we're seeing a lot of snook at night around our local bridges and dock lights near the passes during the day very active snook around the grass flats around those local bridges anywhere that water's moving where those snook can kind of sit and relax and not waste energy while ambushing passing bait they're really stacked up and actively feeding we're seeing a lot of redfish around still too uh, especially around those edges of the grass flats, oyster bars at high tide, those mangrove shorelines are a great place to look. We're seeing trout around those potholes, cuts, and pockets uh, located adjacent to places holding bait, like bridges, docks, uh, seawalls, even grass flats, mm. very active trout bite, and some really big trout been caught lately as well. And also, we're keeping our eye on that next FWC meeting coming up May 12th and 13th, where they're going to be making a final decision on the fate of snook, trout, and redfish and that catch and release only mandate that's going on right now. Plus, the sheep's head are still biting well. They're very active still around our bridges and docks. This last week, that past <laughs> cold front kind of re-excited the sheep's head bite. And we've been seeing a lot of mackerel in the early mornings around our beach fishing piers and around local jetties in the mouth of passes. And that's about it inshore, Russell. Loving these pictures. Uh, we got about 30 seconds for uh, near shore and offshore. Well, the biggest thing right now, near shore and offshore, are the mackerel and kingfish continue to dominate kind of the in or near shore report. Around those artificial reefs, those rock piles, anything holding bait are plentiful mackerel, about 30 to 70 foot. There's some nice kingfish mixed in. There's even some sailfish showing up this time of year. We got a sailfish this past week on the flat line. Remember, if you ever hook one of those guys, you want to try to keep them in the water. Unfortunately, in that recent situation, it was on a boat not really equipped to handle that type of fish. So we had to hoist them up quickly, de-hook them, and take a picture as we hoisted them back into the water. But try to keep them in the water unless you plan to harvest that fish. And then the hogfish bite still going pretty well, but it's dropped off quite a bit compared to past weeks. We're seeing active red grouper, especially in deeper water offshore beyond about 140 foot. And this upcoming week, the Gulf of Mexico Fishery Management Council is having a meeting talking about our red snapper 
and the great Red Snapper count. So some big things coming on Red Snapper this upcoming week, so pay attention. And you can check out Hubbard's Marina's fishing reports for more updates on that. And our Facebook page will be announcing what happens at that meeting. All right, Dylan. Thanks. You know, I'm, I'm going to come fishing with you soon, but this weekend I can't do it. I'm busy. Got WrestleMania going on. It's going to be a busy weekend for me, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm scheduled for WrestleMania. It's going to be busy for me, too. But don't forget, Russell, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too busy. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to throw me a curve there. Hey, we love you. Take care, man. <laughs> we'll talk soon. Bye. See you, guys.